Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will call the October 20th meeting of the Common Council to order. I will ask the clerk to call the roll to determine our quorum. Alderperson Chapleski. Here. Haas. Here. Lysak. Here. May. Here. Probst. Here. Reinke. Here. Rote. Here. Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Barzak. Here. Ten present, none excused. We have a quorum. Uh, I ask that you rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll be led this evevening by Alderman Chapleski. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, we will move on to item D on our agendas. We have one item for public hearing this evening. I'll ask Madam Clerk to read that item. A hearing on the resolution to approve the year 2016 operating plan for the downtown West Dallas Business Improvement District and to adopt the special assessment method as stated therein, final. Mr. Patrick Schloss. Mayor and members of the Common Council, tonight we're fulfilling the statutory requirement for the downtown West Dallas Business Improvement District um, 26 proposed operating plan. And this deals with the, the funding of the special assessment that is placed on properties in the downtown West Dallas Business Improvement District. The contents of the bid operating plan is a summary of accomplishments to date, description of activities that are planned, as well as proposed budget. The plan is also new this year and incorporates a 2016 to 2020 operating plan, like a five-year business plan. If you look at the boundaries of the business improvement district, it's generally South 76th Street to South 70th Street along Greenfield Avenue and to the alleys north and south. The budget process starts with an annual goal setting session, as well as bid committees submitting their ideas to the bid executive director. And they put a plan together that is uh, presented to the bid board for approval and then therefore sent to Common Council. The proposed budget for 2016 includes professional services activities, operating expenses, um, generally Main Street type of format in terms of promotions, economic and design. The 2015 budget was 92,975. The proposed budget is 99,550 for 2016. And that, was, that would be the amount that they would be levying under the special assessment. If you look at the values of the downtown and how they're tracking, in 2015, the value actually dropped 77,600, 0.4% decline. And 2010, you can see they were one of their higher points of 21.6. Um, and where the value of the downtown has been going. The proposed levy is $5.37 per 1,000 of assessed value. And you can see here of the history of the assessed value in the downtown. Uh, being a small six block area, any change in the value does impact the special assessment levy. The annual plan inc includes creating videos highlighting the downtown, a friends of the, the downtown program, expanding outreach, working with UWM to explore redevelopment options, consideration of pop-up parks and implement uh, working with the city to do a traffic circulation study or pedestrian um, traffic study. The five-year plan inc includes a comprehensive advertising program, a broader marketing campaign, including the city and the chamber, maybe uh, a consideration of expansion of the bid district. Um, and, there, and these are, you know, a five-year plan. They're not necessarily things that will happen each year, but it's a broader plan that the organization is working towards. And one of the new things they implemented in their operating plan are performance measurement um, benchmarks. These are at a scale to measure how the organization is uh, progressing on various uh, aspects of the goals for the organization. And this, these are just some of the pictures of the, the downtown and their activities through the year, from planting to wellness activities to various promotions and representations. And they've been successful in attracting new business, such, such as Aggie's Bakery in our downtown and also um, Cream City Clay. Um, I believe their vacancy is around 4%, which is one of the lowest it has been in, in a number of years. I'll gladly answer any questions or comments regarding the bid operating plan. Answer questions from the Common Council? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. I just wanted to make a comment as the one of the aldermen for the district and as a business owner, property owner, and a resident of the downtown, I just wanted to speak up for the bid 
Uh, I, you know, I, I, yes, we've been seeing a decline in values, but I think that's just a, we're dealing with the overall national issue on that currently. I think the bid's been doing a great job. We've been doing great events. Uh, Patrick did uh, touch on the highlights. Um, I have faith in the bid and the, and the programs and the, and the issues they're working on, um, and I fully support the bid and their efforts. And I pay my bid fees. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Weigel. Any other comments or questions from the council? See none. Is there anybody in the audience with questions or comments on this item for public hearing? Okay, seeing none, we will close our public hearing. And we will move on to item E on your agendas, which is citizen participation. This is an opportunity for residents to address the council on matters of interest to them. We ask that you keep your comments to approximately five minutes, and we ask that you give us your name and address for our record. Is there anybody that wishes to address the council under citizen participation? Okay, uh, Robert Brown, 2160 South 86th Street. I came here for several reasons. One, I brought some of my neighbors with me. We've been after the Olive Inn for at least four years to put a stop sign on, on, um, on Grant Street by, by the high school from 84th. We wanted it on, I think it's 80, um, it's 86th Street where they got one right now. It's turned sideways so nobody uses it. I don't know what it's doing up there. Everybody speeds by 50 miles an hour down the street. Uh, these young people live on the corner house and the traffic goes by them. When they stop the car for speeding, almost hitting one of their, hitting their sister, the guy got out of the car and punched them both. The cops came, nothing happened. And the sign, I was tempted to turn it around myself. What good is a sign that the city paid the money to put up and it's on a sideways, you can't see it. It's not turned around so the car stop. It's a waste. And on all the aldermen's the calls to the aldermen, the police department, everybody ignores this. It's probably because we're such low lowlifes living in that neighborhood. I can't figure out why they would pay no attention, but they haven't. So we came tonight, another incident with these guys, and I'll have, they want to address you when I get done. But I also want to point out that some of the things I do just quickly, and it should involve West Ellis. I did file a lawsuit when same-sex <coughs> marriage was uh, conducted by our uh, county executive on the 7th of June last year, and, and uh, that lawsuit is in uh, federal court right now. And I'll be known in, in about a couple of weeks here if it's going to a jury trial. Uh, I think it's a disgusting thing that happened. They were supposed to wait four days before they could get married, and they married them the same day, and we were harassed by the, uh, the, county, uh, uh, the county that was there, the workers, the sheriff's department. They told us we don't belong there. Go on to get out of here with your signs. This is set aside this property in front of the courthouse for same-sex marriages. You don't belong here. How would you like that? for your religious rights. How many people say, oh, we have freedom of speech? Oh, yeah? Make an appearance one time in front of the courthouse when they don't approve of what you're doing and they don't like your free speech and see what happens. Now, I'm gonna get one more thing here before I sit down. Um, as long as I'm here, I'll hold another protest uh, Friday at five o'clock. I've been doing this ever since 9-11. We go in front of the uh, the mosque, which is on 13th and Leyden. Um, we, it's Islamic Society of Milwaukee. It's 4707 South 13th Street. We stand in front, hand out Bibles, literature. We have signs. So far, nobody's ever got arrested. I've been going there for since 9, 9-1-1, 9-11. Uh, I just want to quickly point out two things. Um, one will be supporting Ben Carson because he said he doesn't want a Muslim for president. People should back him if you believe in what he said. Don't just sit around and say, oh, ain't that nice he said that. Second of all, some of our public schools are using taxpayer money to force other young children to act like Muslims. Uh, they force children to pray Muslim prayers, dress up as Muslims, and practice Muslim holy days. Some of the students were actually told to recite our Pledge of Allegiance saying, 
One nation under Allah. Some public school teachers are actually teaching our students that Islam is good and true, but Christianity is bad. Then we also know the stories about the Muslim who beheaded his wife. And Mr. Brown, you have one minute on. remaining. Pardon? You have one minute remaining. I'll tell you what, I'll let these young people get up and take the minute, okay? Thank you, and I hope if somebody wants to join me on 13th and Layden this Friday, I'm only, this is the last time I'm going this year, uh, come down at 5 o'clock. You're welcome to join with us and the other people I have with me. Like I said, last time I was there, the police shook my hand, and that's happened twice to me. Thank you. Okay, why don't, they're just going to talk about the street that they live on, how bad it is, and things that happen. I'm Dwayne Brewer. I live right behind Central High School on 86 and Grant. Speak up a little. Louder. And uh, there are a lot of high schoolers that get out and they tend to speed. And it's an everyday thing. The stop signs don't work. And it just feels unsafe living there without a, something going on. And no matter how many times you can yell at them to slow down, that doesn't do no good. You can call the cops and they'll ask to see tread marks or how fast were they going. It really doesn't pay to have a stop sign if it's not in use. Does that wrap up your comments? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm Jake Brewer, and I live in 2186 South 86. And uh, I've been noticing the stop signs, like, them in the streets, like, speeders, loud music, <coughs> and I have a four-year-old sister that likes to go play ball across the street. And I just can't have all the speeding. I mean, they should fix the stop sign, and they wouldn't, Hopefully, we're not speeding anymore. I'm not so concerned about the loud music, but the speeding needs to stop. So, that's about it. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the audience that wishes to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Okay, seeing none, we will close citizen participation and we will move on to item F on your agendas on page one you will find the room numbers for our standing committees which will be meeting during recess um, going on to item G the mayor's report I have a handful of things to share this evening um, last week or I'm sorry last council meeting I had forgotten about a ceremony I had attended that I want to bring up today even though it's a little bit old, but um, our mobile integrated healthcare plan or program is underway, and I had attended at UWM the graduation ceremony for the first three members of the West Dallas Fire Department that um, went through the program and graduated. There were also representatives from the city of Milwaukee, the city of Greenfield, and I just wanted to congratulate them. This program has been getting a lot of positive publicity, and it is really providing an increased level of service to our residents at a much more f affordable and lower cost. Um, now moving up a couple of weeks, um, we have a lot of Halloween events coming up in the city, and they start this Saturday the 24th with the um, Halloween in the Park at Greenfield Park, which is done by Community Alliance Against Drugs Group, 
as well as the West Isles West Milwaukee Recreation Department, and they do this in cooperation with the West Isles Police Department. It is from 4 to 8 p.m. at Greenfield Park at picnic area number three. It is a family-friendly event with hayrides and campfires, um, costume parade for the kids, there's a DJ, and there's very affordable food there for purchase. Um, costumes are for, the cost, contest for costumes is for children 12 and under. The following weekend, the 31st, the downtown bid has their Halloween hunt, and that is from 9 a.m. to noon in our business district, which you saw earlier on Patrick Schloss's presentation, from 70th to 76th Street on Greenfield Avenue. It's open to kids 12 and younger, accompanied by an adult. They can come in costume and receive treats from merchants up and down the avenue. They are also collecting non-perishable food items to go to a local food pantry. And one final note on Halloween, the trick or treat will be coming up on October 31st, and that's gonna be from four o'clock until seven o'clock this year. We are going to try an evening time with it being at night, figuring that uh, the younger kids can go right at four when it'll still be a little bit light out, and then if the kids are a little older and wanna go when it gets darker, they can go closer to seven o'clock. Um, last Friday, I attended the grand opening of the Ultimate Salad Bar on 110th and National. Uh, this is a really a nice family-owned business. Um, I know the aldermen from the 5th District were there, and they offer salads and soups and wraps. They have a baked potato bar, and they really have quite, um, quite a lot of options for food. It's quick, and it's good. Um, a couple of Wednesdays ago, I had the opportunity to play in a charitable basketball game against the Harlem Ambassadors um, at West Dallas <coughs> Central. I was actually one of the shortest guys compared to them. Um, and I also realized I'm way out of shape and I can't jump. <laughs> but I did not tear or sprain anything. I did realize that the uh, Central Boys basketball coach, Dave Malachtik, has got an incredible jump shot. And it was really a great night for the Central community. Um, I have to give a shout out to Jess Keys, who put this event on. She had the gym full, and I think everybody had fun at this event. Um, every, everything raised in the ticket sales and the um, concessions went to Central Bulldog Athletics. So I just love telling stories about people in the city that step up and do good things for good causes. Um, that will conclude the mayor's report this evening. Do we have any reports from the alder persons? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Vitale? Yeah, I would like to advise the administration and finance uh, committee meeting. We will have a meeting right in the coming council chamber. Tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Any other alder persons reports? Mayor Devine. Alderman Probst. Um, I'm very excited to announce that this coming week we will have the grand opening of the new hotel in the second district. So I know it's been a long time in coming and I just wanted to let everyone know that that's coming up. Thank you. Any other alder persons reports? Alderman Rote. I would like to just say that uh, <coughs> in the past two weeks we lost a fellow that we gave, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, key to the city to uh, a year ago, Veterans Day, Jack Rissler, better known as Jumpin' Jack. He was a parachuter for the Marine Corps. He was uh, parachuted out at 400 feet only because the pilot made a mistake. They were supposed to be at 1,500 feet. He and seven others, three survived. He was held prisoner of war for 255 days, awarded the Silver Star and uh, the French Legion of Honor Award. Again, Jack Rissler, 94. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Rote. Any other reports from the Alder person? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, I want to report that last week the 2015-2016 uh, West Dallas Youth Commission met for their first meeting, and everyone in the room will be happy to know they're planning on doing candidates forums next spring for the election. Um, also, uh, it was uh, su suggested and will probably be acted on we're going to try to do a county executive ca candidates forum also. So they're going to work on questions and see if they can get the county executive candidates probably in this room for a forum from our students from the community, which is, I think should be very interesting. Um, also, uh, two <coughs> weeks ago, I was not here because I was in uh, Dubuque, Iowa at the Growing Sustainability, the S Growing Sustainable C Cities <coughs> Conference. Um, there are a lot of very interesting ideas. Uh, some crossover ideas of using like <clears throat> green medians and bio swales as bump outs for traffic calming. I know it's an issue that we've been talking about. Um, some of the ideas were to leverage healthcare money, say lead abatement money with 
energy efficiency money so that when you're getting the lead out of a home you're rehabbing, you're also putting energy efficient windows in. Um, I was glad to see that a lot of the focus was on fiscal sustainability, looking at projects, not just doing them because they feel good, but because they're good for the community and they save money over the long haul. Um, other interesting concepts were blight intervention. I know we're working on that here in the community. It's trying to stay ahead of the problem. It was disheartening to see some of the problems that other communities in the upper Midwest are having with tracts of blocks with just one or two habitable houses on them. I mean, I think we all have seen one or two houses that have been what we call them zombie properties or whatever. And I'm glad to see that West Dallas is working on it. Um, it's going to be, I think, our big neighbor to the east. What they do is going to have an impact on the com you know, community wide also. So um, if anybody has any questions, I have a, some literature too on the Sustainable Cities Conference. It was informative. Um, and again, it was as oftentimes the cities that are on the front edge of new ideas oftentimes spend a lot of money to learn lessons. And I'm always a fan of the city at the center. We'll let these other communities do the expensive learning and then we'll just kind of pick up the ideas that work and let, let them spend their taxpayers' money and we will do uh, the wisest thing we can for our, our citizens here. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other reports? <coughs> Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council regular meeting of October 6, 2015. Second. There's a motion with a second by Alderman May. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item J, uh, I'll ask for a motion to place item three on file and uh, send item four to our city attorney. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Probst, second by Alderman Barzak. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item K, standing committee reports. We have none. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meeting. Second. There's a motion with a second by Alderman Reinke. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? We are in recess.